my name is Michael uh, German. I'm working yeah, more than 10 years already now uh, for IKEA, uh, mainly with a focus on the wood-based panel uh, production, but also with the um, development of new uh, wood-based panel products. That was uh, the main focus, and I think that will be also the focus for the next years. Yeah, my name is Jan Olof, Jan Olof Fechter. I work in IKEA of Sweden in the, in the purchasing development area. Um, I'm working there since almost 20 years. I have a past in development, I have a past in natural textiles. And uh, since a number of years I work as responsible engineer for wood-based panels, which is particle boards, which is fiber boards and lightweight boards. The sustainability agenda of IKEA is based mainly on, the, on a strategy that is called People and Planet Positive. This was launched a couple of years ago. It consists out of uh, three focus areas. And these areas are, first, healthy and sustainable living, which relates a lot to the uh, product range that we, are, that we are offering and selling, enabling people to lead a sustainable and healthy life at home. And then we have um, fair and equal, which is a lot of um, social equality and um, these kind of questions in, the, in, in our um, production and uh, selling markets. And one of the focus areas which is most relevant or most, yeah, most relevant for us in the, in the wood-based panel industry um, is about circularity and climate positive um, of IKEA. We will talk about that a little bit more later on. That is a very crucial point actually, uh, because the lifetime or the lifespan of a product is very much uh, defined by two points. One is uh, the technical design, the technical reliability and usability of a product. But on the other hand, we have also uh, fashion and design, and that is uh, sometimes quite temporary. So we have to focus to optimize both of these uh, areas in order to keep this product uh, in a longer time of usage. For example, if we look to the technical um, uh, um, yeah, performance of a, of a product, we see that we in our yeah, quite fast uh, changing um, society and way of living and also professional uh, challenges uh, that we face, we need to move a few times. And that, of course, should be done also together with our furnitures. And there we try to design furnitures which are possible to disassemble and assemble a few times. But also we give uh, for our um, products a certain warranty, uh, for example, like uh, in the kitchen where we have around 25 years. But we have also fashion and design. And uh, there we count very much on the Scandinavian style of design, which is normally a very long lasting design, so which supports the sustainable thinking behind the product. But in addition, we uh, offer also uh, some uh, features to our customers um, to yeah, use it and fresh it up a little bit, uh, especially the look uh, over this lifetime. So you mean that we, that we have a timeless de design that, that lasts for many years and uh, from time to time our customers can spice them up by accessories, which give a different look and a different feeling. IKEA has committed to the Paris Agreement um, and this commitment means that we have committed to reducing uh, the carbon emission, the carbon dioxide emission um, of our products and our selling process by 70% until the year 2030. A reduction by 70%, that is a reduction by more than half. And if we look at the, at the uh, carbon dioxide emissions of the, of the uh, things that we are selling, then there is a lot of components that we can look at. It can be the car traffic to the stores and back. That is, um, that is one share. It is the energy used for the lights that we see here in the store, for example. And we have a lot of carbon dioxide embodied even in the, in the products. And this is a big part. In Category Area Wood, we are in the very comfortable situation that we are working with wood as a raw material, which is climate neutral. This is very good. But wood is not the only material that we are using, uh, that is used. Um, it is also um, glue, for example. Particle board consists 90% out of wood and 10% out of glue. And this glue is made from 
oil, natural gas, which are fossil materials. Um, and we have, um, we have the ambition to, um, to go to renewable chemistry on this um, glue and ad adhesive side, as one thing. And the other big um, challenge that we, uh, that we have committed to is reducing, um, or you can say abandoning, the use of fossil fuel in the wood-based panel industry. So by 2030 there shall be no more fossil energy used for making the board material that we're selling. There's one interesting uh, information which is maybe uh, good to share. Even if the glue content is very low, like 10% in the board, but it makes one of the biggest shares of the total CO2 footprint. We see that the board need to be more and more from recycled materials. And uh, the challenge is to extract from the uh, recycled material, which is, uh, for example, collected uh, uh, from uh, after the uh, post-consumer usage. So we need to see how do we extract the right uh, fractions out of it uh, to manufacture particle board, but also, and that uh, is more and more important also in the future, how to make a fiber board from recycled materials. So we need to prepare the recycled available wood in order to, to uh, fulfill the functions in the final product properly and also in the processes for this. So therefore we need to sort it, but we need to separate also and for this we need uh, technologies and we need uh, there a certain capability along the supply chain to fulfill this task. And there is one uh, great uh, history in the wood industry since uh, 30 uh, years uh, where recycled wood was used. So we have a great basis of uh, suppliers and also of uh, factories which are able to do it, but we don't have it around the globe. So we need to have this in all areas in where we are manufacturing uh, our furniture, so we need to have it from the collection of the recycled material to the uh, preparation of the material into the usage. So we need to have the full supply chain. We are standing here with our Kunzbacker kitchen, which is a great example for our sustainability agenda and activities around this topic. So we try to manufacture here a kitchen uh, which is made from 100% recycled materials. And if we look, uh, for example, uh, to the fronts here, and especially also to the foils, to the uh, elements here, we see that it is made from 100% bottles. It is recycled bottles. And the furniture behind, the furniture board panel, the wood-based panel, is a particle board which is also manufactured from 100% recycling material. Michael, that you're talking about particle boards. I have two pieces of particle board with me. You probably will recognize them. And um, one of them is made from fresh wood. This is the little bit lighter one. And one of them is made of recycled wood. There is no difference, except of a little bit the color, you could say. They do exactly the same job. And as soon as we have a nice surface, maybe foil or lacquer on them, um, the recycled one is the better alternative, since it is also a lot cheaper than the fresh. You're asking about my vision of the wood-based panel industry in the future. And as we have said before, there is a lot of challenges that we're having, and we have a strategy, and there is a time frame to it. So the, my vision would be that these challenges, the solutions for them, become true. It is a high degree of recycling in the board-based materials. It is the ban of fossil energy in the wood-based panels industry sector. And I have one more thing. In IKEA, we use a lot of these lightweight constructions. They are made out of particle board and a honeycomb paper film which we're feeling that make it, makes it light and sustainable. And on the surface, we have this nice, fine fiberboard surface. I said fiberboard, and I said recycling. Many people in the industry say that fi fiberboard is not recyclable. And that is true for the moment. And it's a big challenge for us, because we promise to our customers that all our products are recyclable. So what shall we do? We need to make fiberboard recyclable. And there is projects and development ongoing to make this possible. 
So there is a vision and there is activities and development ongoing to make fiber board recyclable. And uh, this is where we need to work together. IKEA, the board suppliers and the machine suppliers together to make this trip. An important precondition for res uh, environmentally responsible products is that we work along the supply chain with competence and innovation and also with passion for this recycling agenda. This sounds very correct, but maybe a little bit abstract. I want to put it simple. We need to do it together. The customers, IKEA, the furniture makers, the board makers, and the machine makers who are on the beginning of all of it. So together we can make all this happen.